gastroenteritis, just like the way it sounds. That's coined from the Latin word gastro, then enteritis. That means stomach, intestine. The nitis means inflammation <coughs> of the gastro. So it means an infection of that alimentary canal, that canal where the food goes through and comes out. So any infection at any point in time, the other point, we call it gastroenteritis. Yes, uh, numerous things. But the major thing, the major pathology there, the major cause is an infection. Now, it could be secretory, it could be inflammatory, it could be that of uh, drug-induced, or what the foodborne, from the foodborne disease. Now, some, some people would take unclean food in, and from that point in time, there's an infection. With the body, we want to reject it. So, how it operates? The system has a mechanism to take in whatever is eaten. But what, when it takes in something that's foreign, let's say an organism, maybe a bacteria, maybe a virus, maybe a fungi, what it does is to want to eliminate it. So once it absorbs and it adheres to it, it wants to wash it off. So at that point in time, it gets to lose fluid. So that's where people go to the toilet and say, wow, I've got to the toilet like three, four, five times. The symptoms mostly are through diarrhea and vomiting or nausea. Nausea is a feeling of vomiting, and vomiting is actually puking it out. Then diarrhea is frequency of going to the toilet to ease off. So the body tends to push out a lot of fluid into the system which wants to release all these organisms, these contaminants, from the body. So diarrhea, the definition is not actually coined in any way, but most people would define it as once the stool takes the form of any container. If it's a square container, if it's circular, that means it's going to be watery and the frequency more than up to five times a day. It's an highly infectious disease, actually very, very infectious. It can range from being mild, where it's self-limiting, it's self-contained. The person just goes to the toilet once or twice or three times and says, oh, it's over. Oh, I used, I popped one medication and everything is over. And it could be life-threatening. And the means of, the mode of transmission is mostly fecal oral. Somebody defecates in probably a nearby um, drinking system, maybe in a stream, or goes to the toilet, does not clean properly, now goes to the kitchen to prepare food, or the, vegeta uh, the vegetables brought from the market are not properly cooked. You know, nowadays people are eating fruit salads and all the rest. You know, broken skin from fruits, the leafy vegetables, the carrots, and all that things are not properly prepared. So once there's contact with an infected feces, that is stool, and the person takes it in, or through poor uh, water, water, uh-huh, Maybe you know, drink it from the tap or contaminated cup. And um, this issue of roadside people that are cooking nowadays, they just, you find them use one basin of, of, of water to wash like 300 plates, you know, and they give it to serve the next, the next meal. The food may be steaming hot, but the plate is dirty, it's contaminated. So when they eat it, they, it, they get infected. Yes, uh, preventions are in three phases. Usually, there are usually four phases primordial, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Okay. Vaccination is key. Oh, there's a vaccine? Yeah, there are vaccines for numerous no, 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 no. pneumococcal vaccines, measles vaccines, the rotavirus vaccines. Most times, it is seasonal during the raining season. Poor sanitation. You find people dumping refuse in a nearby drainage system, expecting it to flow out of the community. Just 100 or 200 or 500 every week to take away the waste, properly dispose it, has been difficult. So what they do that, oh, the drainage is flowing. Ah, Guara, this is this flood. They put it in there for it to flow. And all this will form a stasis. It's going to stop somewhere. And there's going to be a backflow. Now, most of these things will wash up to the stream. People go there to take drinking water, maybe to wash their clothes or to wash their plates. 
in communities where it's so that it's so bad, they, they may boil the water not up to what it should be. They may not filtrate so well. Or those that imitate and uh, they do uh, pure water, fake pure waters, uh, fake bottled waters, and they sell it to the community back. So hygiene is key. So if that is not corrected, then you're going to be having infections over and over again. Now, the main form of contact, fake oral. You walk into a restaurant, you want to eat. Someone, probably the, the low-level staff there that stays in somewhere that's highly infectious, picks it up from there, comes to work, has been using the toilet over like two, three times, and doesn't clean up properly, and serves you. There could be a measure there. At that point in time, something could happen with the plates or with the meal, since it's not properly handled, and give you something to, to, to eat. And that person contacts it from there. And you say, ah, but I've been eating this restaurant for a while. For like two, three years, I've been going there and I've not had issues. And the next thing is, I just went there yesterday. After four hours, I've been to the toilet like seven times. And that has been my only meal for the day. So you see how easy it is to get contaminated, to come in contact with this. The non work virus, the salmonella typhi, the Giantia lambda, and so many other diseases like that. In this period, uh, we advise people to take probably carbonated uh, drinks when they're going outside. Especially the travelers. Don't eat, don't say you see someone boiling egg on the street and, ah, give me a, give me a, I'm, I'm traveling, don't worry, I want something. Nah, eat light, okay? Avoid vegetables, salads, and stuff like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you're going to eat, ensured it's steaming hot, above 60 degrees. If it's going to be cold, let it be less than four, four degrees centigrade. That's those, at that period, those, those temperatures, most bacteria don't thrive. Most, I don't say all, most don't thrive at that stage. So you could have a measure to escape food poison. So people say food poisoning, yeah? Those are food-borne diseases that could occur. The refuse in the state, in every developing nation, you will have that there because there's people coming in there, you know, large migrants, and lots, they use uh, a lot of refuse. So refuse to reuse your refuse may cause gastroenteritis. If you refuse to reuse your refuse, oh, that's recycling. Oh, okay. So people, if you, if you look at it now, people are going to recycling. The waste in somewhere in Ojota there can be converted to power. In Singapore, in Coventry, in so many other places like that, they convert their waste to wealth. So why are we wasting it? The last time they had an explosion there at Ojota where they put refuse was a methane gas, which can be used and converted to energy. It doesn't cost anything. So I think the population. The youth out there, if you're looking for work now, start recycling cans. People are buying them. They're exporting aluminum in granules. They're buying plastics. They are, you know, it's cheaper to, 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 to recycle now, nowadays. But whatever you're picking is free. So instead of blocking the drainages, pick them up. So the drainages can flow easily. So there can be reduction in the rate of unemployment, infection of gastroenteritis, and also the pollution will be reduced. To curtail an epidemic, there's a system in place. But how effective the system is, we don't, it's, it's porous, let me put it that way. Every hospital in the state is tied to the local government. Also the primary health care centre is tied to the local government or the LCDAs. Every month, diseases seen in hospitals are reported to local government areas. Data has been collated and sent to the monitoring agency in the state. If this data is used for data sake, like, oh, we've collated this, and there's no implementation or review of the diseases that are present, well, that's the way to spot epidemic. Oh, 13 hospitals have picked up five patients each in social, social areas. We have gastroenteritis. No, it's, it's dysentery. No, it's cholera. We've been able to identify in certain areas. Yes, there are warning signs. But take note, most of these people don't get to the hospitals. 
So government should be able to cater for that. How would they cater for that? They need to come to the community more. Just the way they go about the national uh, immunization program, where they go around door to door, they need to go around, knock doors, and talk to them. Oh, this is waste in front of you. Why are you keeping waste in your compound? You know, no, take them out. We're going to be fined. Okay, let's help you to take it out. You can't afford it. You know, such measures could come in place, like incentives for them. Okay, you, in this house, if you, if you take away your trash, we'll give it to you free. Okay, probably at the end of the year, if you're able to pay 6000 for the whole year to remove your trash, we'll give you rebates or no, we'll give you awards. You know, things like that should come into place to give people incentives. Because no, everybody wants the easy way out. They rather throw trash in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the drainage. They rather just go out there to buy medication over the counter to give the child. They, they, they rather just ignore government policies when there are no incentives. But if this mass communication incentives, if there are things to make people do the right thing, so this government should go ahead and, and embrace it. People that usually present, they come with like, ah, I've got abdominal cramps. Uh, after going to the toilet the first time, it relieved. No, the cramps is coming back. So there's a cramp and they go to the toilet. Certain organisms, you know, are culprits for that. Oh, I've been vomiting. No, I feel like vomiting. Those are signs, those are symptoms. So they need to present to the hospital. But in case they need the first aid, someone that's probably not vomiting, there's ORS. They can take the rapid salt therapy and quickly drink. They can make it at home, you know and quickly take it before present to the hospital. So when they come to the hospital, probably they've been vomiting. Someone who's vomiting cannot take orally then. So we need something more. So I would advise, don't go to the over-the-counter and purchase certain medications for it. You don't know what you're treating. It may just be virus that doesn't need antibiotics at all. It could be self-limiting that will go on its own. But come to the, if you can't go to the hospital that you can't afford, go to the primary health care center. Just check in there and lodge the complaints. Let's see before it gets worse. Because if it's, if it's cholera, it's deadly. It's highly contagious. In an hospital setting, they quarantine such people. You set them apart, then you try to uh, rehydrate with fluid much more than what the person can probably afford at the end of the day. So let us be penny wise and pounds foolish. Yeah.